Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's doing really, really well on this beautiful day. Um, I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but I'm in the Davis Mountain. I keep looking out my window. I'm in the Davis Mountains and it's gorgeous out there. It's so gorgeous. I hope it's just as pretty where you are. My name is Leslie Worden. I am the Director for Outdoor Program and Camping at Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest. And welcome to part two of the Brownie Inventor Badge. Now, um, if you're not a Brownie, if you're older, if you're younger, if you're not even a Girl Scout yet, that's fine. Keep watching. Um, everything that we have uh, to offer is good for everyone. So um, I'm not sure how many of you are on yet, and some of you are probably going to watch this on replay, possibly even on YouTube. So we're just going to do a quick recap of what we went over last week. So one of the first things we did was we opened up our inventor's mind. Um, getting into that mindset of looking at things as inventions instead of stuff is pretty key. So when you start looking at like one of the examples I used is a water bottle uh, that I have that I had a hard time drinking out of because it had such a wide mouth. But somebody invent, I wasn't the only one with that problem, thank goodness. Um, somebody invented this little guy called a splash guard. And when you put it in the mouth of this bottle, you don't spill the water on you anymore. Super glad that somebody made that invention. Um, so we talked about all different kinds of uh, inventions that make our lives better, um, things that we have already in our house that we could improve on, some things that um, we've just been thinking about for a long time. We may want to put those on paper. We talked about all kinds of things. So um, this particular one that I just showed you, it definitely made my life easier. I also showed you uh, guys two different types of laptop bags and um, we talked about the differences in those. So I hope that those things helped you to open up your inventor mind and look at things all around you. Um, I'm going to tell you a few more inventions or actually innovations, things that can be used for something else. Just like um, I was talking, I actually still have this here, this uh, blanket. It's actually a baby swaddle. I use it as a blanket, um, not one to keep warm, just something to have on me at all times. Um, so there's some a lot of different innovations, and I'm pretty sure that most of you have done this one, a blanket, just a regular blanket, not like the one I had over here. It can be used to keep you warm or you can use it to make a fort. And I wonder how many of you have made those little indoor forts during this time. Um, another innovation is a pickle jar or any kind of jar. It comes with pickles in it. Once the pickles are gone, you can uh, use it for a pencil holder to put your hair ties in. You can do it, you can use it for all different kinds of things. Actually, one of my favorite um, weekends that I've had out here at camp was a mother-daughter weekend, and we took all kinds of trash, we did a trash to treasure, and we turned them into beautiful, beautiful things. So those are some things for you to think about. Um, a cardboard box. I mean, who hasn't played in a cardboard box, right? Um, I know you see a lot of videos online of haven't made a good fort in a long time. I know. I think it's about time. I think I think this is time that we all get together and, and start making forts in our houses. Um, but cardboard boxes, you see videos of cats playing in them all the time or kids, little kids. You buy them a, a gift and they play with the box instead. That's the thing. You can turn a box into a robot costume. You can turn it into a car. Um, I've seen um, actually another council, they had their brownies turn theirs into um, a roller coaster. So there's all different kinds of things you can do with stuff like that. I also wanted to talk to you about some women innovators. Um, you know, at Girl Scouts, we definitely, um, we want you to grow up and be 
strong, courageous, confident. I've got some really neat inventions that women have made. So this happened a long, long time ago, back in 1903. Um, used to vehicles, when you were driving them, if it rained, well, you had to pull over to the side of the road because you couldn't see out your windshield. Well, Mary Anderson, a lady, came up with the invention in 1903 for, what do you think it was? The windshield wiper. So the next time you're driving in your car and your windshield wipers come on, you can be really proud knowing that a woman invented that. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever been in a hospital, um, had to stay the night there or had to be there for testing, but I can tell you that when you're in the hospital and your nurses and doctors come in and out all through the night and they have to turn the light on because they've got to see what's going on. They've got to look at your charts and all of that. Well, there was a little girl. She was in the hospital and this really bothered her. So she developed at 10 years old a thing called a glow sheet. It's a special type of paper that glows in the dark and it's used for those charts. 10 year old Rebecca Schroeder invented that. I think that's pretty ingenious. Um, here's probably one of my personal favorites because I have one and I use it all the time. Um, this particular lady did not like vacuuming. Who here does not like to vacuum? It's not one of my favorite things to do. Um, she invented the Roomba robot vacuum and it vacuums your room all on its own. It has a base that it goes to. You can time it. You can program it to go off at a certain time. Ours goes off at seven o'clock every night. Um, the dogs hate it, but we love it. Um, well, let me pick one more. I'm going to pick this one because I happen to uh, love these. So a lady named Sherry, and I am going to butcher this last name. I'm just going to tell you right now. Sherry Sh we're just going to say Sherry because I can't say her last name. And her three daughters invented some things called gibbets. Um, they go on your Crocs. It, Crocs are shoes, the plastic shoes that have little holes in them. They loved wearing their Crocs because they were so comfy. And I agree with that. But they felt, they felt like they were boring. So they invented little things that go on them. I don't personally own any. I, I feel like maybe I'm a little old for that. But they invented little, um, I don't know, I've seen them with little hearts, little dogs, all kinds of little, basically charms for your shoes. They invented that, a woman and her three daughters. They sold it to Crocs in 2006 for $10 million. Seems like a simple little invention, but it made them a lot of money. So... When we opened up our inventor's mind and we started thinking about different things, um, get a notebook, write down, because you don't have to just stop doing this now that this program is over. Get a notebook, write down your ideas, um, and maybe do it throughout the summer, maybe continue to do it. Write down your ideas, because you never know when you are going to develop the next amazing thing. I'm going to take a drink really quick. So now we're going to talk about some ways to solve problems. And maybe not even problems. I feel like maybe that's not the right word to do. We're going to look at 10 different or at ways to do the same thing differently. So we're going to talk about making music. So there's all different kinds of ways to make music, right? You can whistle. You can pound on the table. Um, one that your parents probably won't like. You can bang pots and pans together. Uh, that used to be the big thing for me on New Year's Eve. I got to go out in the front yard and bang uh, lids together. That was my big thing. Um, what are some other creative ways that you can make music? Um, maybe with a rubber band, you can kind of make a little bit of a, I've done that before just out of boredom. Um, you can, it makes a certain sound. I've seen people fill up actual glasses, not like a plastic one, actual glasses of water. And then they get their finger wet and go around. And depending on how much water you have in your glass, it makes a different sound when you go around. There's all different kinds of ways to make music. So pick a subject. It can be any subject. You can go with music. 
Um, it can be how you take your lunch to school. It can be how you water your plants. Like you can water your plants at, you know, probably not every day because they might not make it if you do that. Um, I'm not one to talk because I can't keep plants alive, but you could set them outside and wait for it to rain. You could put, I've seen where people, uh, poke holes in plastic, put it down in. My mom has these things. It's got a bulb on one end and then it gets real skinny. She fills it up with water and puts it down in. When she sees that that bulb has gotten, um, good morning, Miss Helen. When she sees that the bulb has gotten down where it doesn't have a whole lot of water in it, she knows it's time to refill it. There's all different types of ways that you can do these things. So think about one particular thing and try to figure out at least 10 different ways that you can do this particular thing. 10 different ways you can make music, 10 different ways you can water your plants, uh, 10 different ways to carry your lunch, or you can have your lunch delivered. You can take it in a plastic bag. You can take it in a Tupperware container, all different ways. So once you start thinking along those lines, then you'll start seeing different ways to come up with inventions. So <laughs> I went back and watched the video from last week and I got a little sidetracked. Um, and if you know me, you know that that's, that's not far fetched. I, at one point I said, so I want everyone to make a circle. And then I got sidetracked and I didn't go back to it. So, um, another thing that I want for you to do, um, this is actually really fun. I really like this part. Uh, get a piece of paper and draw circles all over your paper, okay? Some can be big, some can be small. Start thinking about all the different things you can draw off of those circles, okay? So it can be a smiley face. And let's think of some obvious ones. The sun, did you know that you can make a fish? Need to invent a better way to wash dishes. Amen, Rink, absolutely. Um, I actually, I'm one of the weirdos. Here I am getting distracted in circles again. I promise I'll go back. Um, I don't use a dishwasher. I use a dishwash, dishwasher as a drain rack and my husband thinks I'm insane. Um, I've always had dishwashers in my homes and I've never used them. I don't know why. It's I'm, Maybe I'm too much of a control freak. I don't know, but I use it as a drain rack. Okay, so your circles. Make circles on a paper and think of all the different things that you can turn those circles into. You can actually make a fish. Um, I know one of the big things when I was growing up, when I would stay with my granny and my pa, they would always have, draw three little circles on top of each other. It would look like it was gonna be a snowman. And then they would turn it into a bunny. They would put the little bunny ears on and then draw the little tail. And I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Um, so that's another thing, another way to wake up that inventor's mind is to use different circles and figure out what you want to make out of them. Let that inventor's mind just go insane. Okay. So those are a few things that you can do to finish out some of the requirements for this badge. And I want to share a few more things with you because we're talking about inventions. Um, there are some things that I love that I'm so glad were invented. One of them is, let me see. I know it's hard to see things on here sometimes. Um, I have a dark background, but yeah, I don't think that helps. So it's really hard. When you're not used to being on the camera, it's really hard. This little guy right here, probably the best hair tie ever invented. Now I've used hair ties for years and years. I was a ballerina. I always had to have my hair pulled up. Um, they would pull my hair. They would hurt. They would give me headaches. This guy right here, let me see, how do I do it? <laughs> Learning curve. So you see how it's twisty, it's plastic. It can stretch really, really far. I have a lot of hair. Um, when I pull my hair up with this, my hair stays in place. It doesn't pull, it doesn't fall down my head. And then like, let's say that I had my hair straight today. I could pull this guy out of my hair and I wouldn't have, and those of you that ever have ever worn a ponytail know, there's a bump on your hair from where your hair tie was, this doesn't leave a bump. So the inventor of this, I salute you. Now I have others. I've literally had this one about two and a half years and I still use it 
pretty much every day. I have others. I'll use them because this one is like a see-through pink. Um, I have a black one that I use like if uh, maybe I'm dressing up a little bit more, even though my, I know my hair is going to go up because it will go up before the end of the day. I have a hot pink one um, and I like those. It's made by the same company, but I keep going back to the same one. Can you imagine having a hair tie for two and a half years? Amazing. I love these types of inventions. The last one I'm going to show you is something my husband and I have used these for years. Um, they're face shields. And I sh now that I think about it, I should have put it on before I did this video. This is probably my favorite one because I am an astronomy nerd. And we can tell I've washed it and not used it. So it's, let me see if you can see. It's just a, I don't know which way to go. It's just a circular piece of material so many uses you can actually put it put it over your head i'm not going to do it because my hair would go like this um put it over your head when it's winter time i wear it like this it goes up on my neck and then it comes down here it keeps my neck completely protected let's say i'm outside working on weeds and i don't want to get all that pollen and stuff pollen is there pollen in weeds rink you got to set me straight on that one you can pull it up over your mouth like this and you can still breathe. It's still wonderful, um, but you're not getting all those particles in your nose. And I hope you could hear me when I said that. These can also be used as a headband. They scrunch up. You could pull it up from your neck and have a cute little headband because you can even manipulate the what shows in it. So I have this one. I have a camo one. I have all others at home. Um, there's a well-known show called uh, Survivor. I actually just did a program in Midland. It was a survivor camp out. Am I turning this the right way? So on the show, Survivor uses these. They call them buffs. And that shows which uh, team that you're on. And so I had a bunch of these made up. I've got all different colors for the different color teams. Um, and that's how we were able to tell what team the girls were on. And they use them as headbands. They put them around their legs, all different kinds of things. Um, I will continue to use these throughout the summer. Um, like I said, it's really great to cover your nose up when you're doing something outside. I did just see from the company that I got these from, they've come out with some now that have SPF in them. So if you are out gardening or whatever, it's made of a very different material. This is a little bit thicker than than what these guys are um so i'm thinking i'll probably get some spf ones for my husband for when he's mowing um I, if you've never been out to camp Mater peak it's pretty big so when he's out mowing to put around his neck to uh to keep him from getting sunburned so see once you open your inventor's mind and you start thinking of all the things like these have really made my life a lot better this <laughs> i can't even tell you how much better my life has been with this. So again, uh, if you're just joining us, that's okay. Go back and, and watch again to uh, get those final steps to complete this inventor's badge. Thank you for tuning in with us. Keep watching our page because we have a lot of really neat programming coming your way. But that's one thing I want to talk to you about really quick before you go. I want to hear from you. I want to hear the types of programming that you want to see. Now, I can't guarantee that every single thing that you that you write down or that you suggest will be done. Uh, we do have limits. Like for me, I live out at camp. I live out in the middle of the mountains. I'm 15 miles from a nearest town, and they're both really, really small towns. Um, so there's not a lot of things I can get right now unless I have it shipped in. Um, so I can't promise that everything that you suggest will be done. But we all know Girl Scouts is girl led. And I really do want to hear from you as to what type of programming that you want to see. OK, but again, keep an eye on our page. Uh, there is a link that takes you to our website. It's going to tell you the upcoming program that we have come up coming. My brain went a little fast. Upcoming programs that we do have for you. Um, I know if you've ever seen one of Rink's programs, you've laughed and laughed because that woman is just hilarious. She is much more comfortable in front of the camera than I am. Um, 
And once this is all over, we cannot wait to see you. But until then, keep watching us here on Facebook. Good to see you. Everyone have a great day.